<laughs> yes. Wow, what a thing, eh? Wow, what a thing. We just did the movie. The movie came out and you know we want to enjoy it and let my father pass. You know, so everything is just a thing, you know. And I look on life very different now. But as you can see, my father was always behind the scene, but he spoke very highly of Bob. Yeah. And he spoke very highly of his majesty and also Marcus Garvey. You know, so we we live good and thank you guys so much for doing this CG and the whole team. One love. Congratulations, young Barrett. I remember to call you for the next movie, right? Uh, we want to recognize the Consul General from St. Lucia, Daryl Montrop. Is Daryl, CG. Excellent. And our honorary consul for Jamaica, based in Texas, he flew down for this event, Mr. Kamari Fullerton. He has been our honor council for over 20 years, doing an excellent job. We appreciate you, sir. And CG St. Lucia, thank you so much for your ongoing support. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask us just to observe a one minute um, silence for a very good friend of the community, friend of reggae music, who gave so much, who passed away uh, yesterday. Peter Morgan from Morgan Heritage, for those of you not aware, um, he just performed at the Ojerk Festival in November, and just reminds us how fragile life is, so anybody who we just hope them, tell them how much you love them, appreciate them, uh, we just have to embrace each other, um, and just live life, enjoy life, and celebrate the greatness within each of us. I want to ask you just to observe a moment of silence for Peter. May his soul rest in peace. Let's give Peter a round of applause. His life, such a fantastic life. Such a great individual. All right, so I've taken over Sophia's job. I'm going to give it back to her. Sophia, come back for me. One of the best MCs in South Florida. Let's give her a round of applause. Have a sweet job. All right, here we go. So the next speaker we have this evening is another Garveyite. Uh, he's a Silver Musgrave Medal recipient from the Institute of Jamaica and Marcus Garvey Excellence Awardee in Education from the Consulate General of Miami. He's the founder of RespectGarvey.com an online platform committed to preserving the legacy of Marcus Garvey. He lives in Miami and is working on a children's book, My Name is Marcus. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Jeffrey Phil. together and uh, greetings Mr. Bowley. Glad to have you here. Um, I am very, very happy to be here um, and that I was invited to give this speech, especially now, seeing as we need permission slips here in Florida okay. to study Black History. Um, it has become even more dire and even more dread that uh, we educate ourselves about Marcus Garvey and his mission. 
and I hope tonight we will be able to learn a little bit more. There are so many people have uh, complained about uh, the Bob Marley movie. A million stories could be told about Bob, and 10 million could be told about Garvey. So don't expect the whole life of someone like Bob to be encapsulated in one hour and 47 minutes, right? So, as, as, so as Vernon Spear would say, make a tweet. So as I'm going through this, I want you to think about uh, Garvey and why do we consider him a hero? You know, it's just like, okay, he can do a lot of things. Uh, uh, Alexander Hamilton did a lot of things. But I don't think he's a hero for us, you know, because of the, the genocidal actions. But, you know, we have a whole play, dedicated, uh, not being said, dedicated, dedicated to that man, you know. Uh, so we really have to sort of what makes, what makes a hero. And as we go through, I want you to, to think about that. So the first thing that, that, that Garvey talked about when he was uh, founding the UNIA in 1914, he talked about black redemption. And when we talk about redemption, we, we, we're talking about restoring the value of. And this was something that Marcus Garvey said over and over. The black skin is not a badge of shame, but rather a glorious symbol of national greatness. All right? Garvey was always into education. Uh, when he was a little boy, his good friend Isaac Rhodes would stand by him. And Garvey always had papers stuck in his, in his pockets. He was a lifelong learner. And he would say to Isaac, pick up your dictionary. Tell any word in there and I will tell you how to spell it and I will tell you what it means. So he was always learning. Self-reliance. Garvey learned about self-reliance when he, well, it concretized when he read Booker T. Washington and the whole idea of self-reliance. That was another pillar of Garvey's work. And if we're talking self-reliance, again, we come back to the idea of education. We will have to educate ourselves. We can't depend upon the state of Florida to do our education for us. So all the churches and the civics groups, we have to make this a 365 day project of educating ourselves about Marcus Garvey. He also talked about purpose many, many times, many times. Uh, this is the number one thing that Garvey, well, several other things that Garvey talked about when he was talking about purpose. But this is, a, this is the thing that drives you. And if you don't have a purpose, as my good friend, uh, Jalov used to say, then why you deal with you? Why you deal with you? You must have a purpose. And again, when he founded the UNIA, this was one of the things that he said. Economics. This, is, this was going to be the backbone. It's a long quote that I'm going to put up here, but he raised one million dollars back in 1940. Right? And had restaurants, printing presses, black dolls. Right? The whole of 7th Avenue was like Garvey Town in Ireland. And Garvey made sure that all of those businesses were up and running. Community. When Garvey held his events, whether here in the United States of America or in Jamaica, they were all day events, right? And he brought the people together. In fact, Miss Lou and Mass Rand, they got their start in Edelweiss with, with, with Garvey. 
Miles Frank was that committed Garveyite, right? Because Garvey always was trying to bring in young talent to the stage. So Garvey was always about economics and community, all day events. Talking about community, it was Garvey and the UNIA who gave us the red, black, and green. And of course, these are just some of the, I couldn't put all of the countries that were inspired by the red, black, and green. But these are just a few. And traditions. Garvey was always talking about we must canonize our own saints. Toussaint Leoverture, Crispus Adams, Harriet Tubman, right? In his, in, in, in his record of uh, talking about uh, in African, this is a quote from African Fundamentalism, right? Where he stresses the need for us to see ourselves as humans. So what is Garvey's message? If you've been paying attention, it is very easy to remember. The first one is redemption. Second one is education, self-reliance, purpose, economics, community, and tradition. What I'd spell? Respect. So anytime you want to invoke Garvey, just say respect. Right? One more time. Respect. I agree. So Garvey left us with this. We must emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. And that goes to the heart of everything. I saw something online the other day. Uh, Wayne Chen put it up. And he talked about uh, the whole idea of a decolonized Jamaica. And instead of calling it in St. Anne, we should just call it Garvey. So can you imagine when we actually do this? And you say, where you come from? We come from Garvey. He gave that speech in 1937 in Nova Scotia. So, what makes a hero? Well, you have to live for something larger than yourself. And Garvey dedicated himself to justice, freedom, and equality. And he not only talked about it, he walked his talk. So, as we go out, if you want to know more about Marcus Garvey, there will be an upcoming event on August the 17th, Jabulani Tafari, and the Roots of, uh, Foundation will put it on again with the help of Commis uh, Commissioner Maxwell B. Chambers. Uh, we will be there to celebrate the 137th anniversary of Marcus Garvey's birthday. And then, of course, later this year, I will be pub th this book will be out. It's published by Blue Bandian Press. They call it a graphic novel, but it's really a comic book. Uh, but it, it incorporates all of Garvey's life, from his birth in 1887 down to the historic speech in 1937. So, thank you all very much. Take care of yourselves and one heart. Oh, by the way, if you want, uh, here are some of the sources. <laughs> I tell you, once a lecturer, always a lecturer, and you always must cite your sources. Thank you. Put your hands together for it. Thank you so much. I did tell you you're going to be entertained and, of course, educated. So it's edutained. Are we ready for some